Hey guys, it's Marshall with PhysioU. I'm here with Rob, just recently graduated from PT school and we'll be doing the Kaiser Residency down in Orange County. Uh, today for the Mentor Minute we'll be talking about IT band syndrome. In the prevalence data, the articles talk about up to 12% in runners and up to 50% in overuse injuries for cyclists with knee pain. Uh, the literature is pretty clear on the types of movement faults and kinematics that occur during IT band syndrome in controls versus runners. And if we look here with Rob, if we, uh, we want to look at him running, or here we'll look at simulated running, so going from a left to a right, um, the two biggest things they talk about is an ipsilateral trunk flexion. So if you see here as it lands on his right, he kind of bends to the right. And the second thing would be as he jumps, he lands femoral adduction and internal rotation. Right? Lots of systematic reviews talk about those two faults being seen in patients with IT band syndrome compared to those controls, those without IT band syndrome. Another big thing they looked at and saw kind of some uh, a common problem with those with IT band syndrome would be just flexibility of the IT band and TFL. And this is kind of where there's some conflicting data where some studies say that you can't really lengthen the IT band, where there are some that talk about you can lengthen the proximal portions of it, definitely with the TFL, kind of improving up to three to five percent in that proximal IT band mobility after stretching. So if we get them on the table, some of the impairments we want to look at would be TFL, IT band flexibility. So if we look here at the Ober's test, right? Kind of bring that leg forward, up and over. Right, his, his uh, foot's pinned in my hip. And then just dropping that leg to see if you can get horizontal to the table. So we can see here, he's not able to get horizontal to the ground, right? So that would be a kind of positive Ober's test. The next thing we want to look at is coordination and strength of the hip abductors. So if I kind of line them up, put them in nice alignment, go ahead and lift your leg up. Ideally, we'd like them to stay nice and straight. If it's someone who has more of a dominant TFL, they're going to choose to go into more hip flexion, which is what we'd want to train them out of. Right? Right? The research shows that improving hip external rotation and abduction strength helps control that femur. So we can choose just a straightforward hip abduction, making sure he stays in some extension. But if he can't do it well, he just keeps overusing the TFL, we might need to choose to go more to an external rotation component, right? Or even go into like an extension moment where he's on, he's on his stomach, he's prone, and he's lifting up into extension, external rotation. Go ahead and lay on your stomach for a second. Right. Right. So here, right? If we have him kind of lift up and then externally rotate across, right? Making sure the pelvis doesn't move, right? So these are great ways to get that extension, external rotation strength, but making sure that we're not using, right, the TFL. Biggest thing is we want to ask him also where he's feeling that to make sure he's using the right muscle. Hope you guys enjoyed today's mentoring minute on IT band. Uh, look forward to the blog by Michael Curtis related to it as well. If you want to learn more, you can always kind of go on the Physio U, check out the free trial on the app. There's lots of more uh, evidence and tests related to IT band as well as the rest of the body. Hope all is well. Take care, guys.